So when I put it on there, I found that the IPM can actually like the mold or the, the powdery mildew can totally go away and the leaves can come back without with very minimal damage, right? My whole goal in terms of, of growing a, a can that is more resistant to powdery mildew is to grow the healthiest possible plant. A plant loves nitrate nitrogen. All plants love it. It ex actually takes a plant a lot of energy to use and, and consume nitrate nitrogen, but the more you give it, the more it'll take. If the plant gets overly stressed, the powdery mildew gets stressed and then decides to, hey, my host is going to die. I better, you know, produce a whole bunch of offspring and, and, and live. What are some of the best foliar sprays for IPM? Well, you're here with Avsai and Mark Bowell and the rest of the team here on Perfect Gardens TV. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and make sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and make sure to hit the notifications for future updates as we release videos. Let's go ahead and get into it. Make sure to check out our monthly membership. For as little as $2.99 a month, you get access now to 105 members, 2,586 photos, 274 videos, 21 files, 1,106 shared links, and much, much more. What bacteria and fungi are, are best for IPM and, and on foil, foliar sprays? Um, sorry, for... for um for um integrated pest reduction. management yeah like pm and botrytis oh, and okay. just kind of like a coating your coating like coating your your plant with living uh, bacteria so nothing else can take host and then also making sure that they don't fail bacteria testing at the end of their grow ah because I think those two are very in play and play in combination right now where, where, where they want to work with bacteria. They want to fight off the PM and the other stuff because that's one way of failing. But are the testing that, that they are testing for is that are they also testing for the microbial life that we're putting on there to help fight them? Right. And, and, um, and of course, that, that will vary state by state. Um, and, and of course, here in Canada, um, we, with, with the regulated industry, there's, there's only certain, um, um, foliar biopesticides that you're, that you're allowed to use anyway. Um, and because, because of that, right. So for example, we, we can't use serenade. Serenade is, a, a bacillus pumilus, um, because if we did, I think that would end up failing, uh, one of our microbials. So it's not, it's not approved for Canada in Canada. Uh, where I believe in California, you are allowed to use Bacillus pumilus or, or Serenade. Maybe it's Serenade. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't want BioWorks to get upset with me. No, you're correct. It's Serenade. Yeah, and it and I've, I've actually found that product to be too strong if they don't use it in a tea with it with other living bacteria and fungi. I've, I, found that, I found that to, to be the case a few times. Uh, what, do you, so, what, do mean, what do you mean by too, too strong? Well, okay. So again, I'm a grower. I'm not a scientist. So I, I, I go off visual experience and I'm like, Hey, that shit works. <laughs> go with it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Arguably I do my science the same way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what I have found is that when I have PM and I'm using a living bacteria, the right, because I go back in the back of the bacteria, I actually look at them and I see what they're actually being used for. And I find one for, in, for my PM or for my problem. And so what I found is that when I use a more array of the ones that maybe, I don't know if they meant to it, but just because they're in the back of the ball, the same similar ones that are used for soil can also be used for IPM on some of the brands out there. So I look, and all of them are different. Some of them are different, some of them are the same. So when I put it on there, i found that the, that the IPM can actually like the mold or the, the powdery mildew can totally go away and the leaves can come back without with very minimal damage right and then again the serenade why i found using it just a one bacteria spraying on the plant at the recommended dose at times it just seems to dry it all out and then it kill it like just kills it instantly okay. so I've, I've i've experienced being able to recover the plant and bring the the leaf almost completely back to life Versus using a, a, a like law minimum law of tolerance example, using mm -hmm. only of one and too much, it, it seems to kill it, does the job, but it also seems to also really it it won't, you know, it, it hurts the plant as well because the, the I found that the leaf can actually come back from damage. 
Right. So what do you think about that? Um, so, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to step back and I'm actually going to step back to the, the topic of minerals before we really, you know, get back to truly answering your question. Um, so for me, it, the foundation of integrated pest management um, is, is nutrition. And, and, and I, I will always equate that the whole root system is a parallel to our own digestive system. And, and our digestive system is, is really the, the, the foundation of our own immune system. So, so it's really important to recognize the roots are very similar to our digestive system. And the roots are the foundation of a plant's immune system. So what, what my, my whole goal in terms of, of growing a, a can of that is more resistant to powdery mildew is to grow the healthiest possible plant, right? So it, 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 seems, it seems like, you know, counterintuitive. Of course, if your plant's healthy, it's, it's, it doesn't have PM. Well, it doesn't have PM because you grew it out of, with good health. And, and so good health it really comes down to a, a, a lot of times having the right environmental conditions, right? So we, we need to, you know, if, if, it's, if you're growing indoors, of course, you need to have your vapor pressure deficit to be appropriate so that you are getting good transpiration. Transpiration is the, really the only way that we can bring proper nutrition into the plant. And in particular, uh, calcium. So calcium is so cr uh, critical to, to making sure that you've got a healthy plant because then, you know, calcium will form calcium pectate, which forms that, that hard cell wall. And, uh, and, then, and then making sure that you're feeding the right amount of nitrogen. You feed too much nitrogen, uh, and in particular in forms like nitrate nitrogen. The plant loves nitrate nitrogen. All plants love it. Uh, it's chocolate. You could definitely get all your whole caloric intake eating chocolate, but it isn't good for you. It ex actually takes a plant a lot of energy to use and, and consume nitrate nitrogen, but the more you give it, the more it'll take. What happens when you take too much nitrate nitrogen, you get thinner cell walls, you actually have more water uptake into the plant cell wall. All of that is a, a magnet to powdery mildew. And, and it's really important to rec recognize that powdery mildew is, is ubiquitous. That means it's, it's everywhere, right? Um, you won't fail a microbial test because you have powdery mildew. You will produce shitty tasting weed if you've got powdery mildew, but you won't fail a microbial test because, because uh, everyone recognizes that powdery mildew is everywhere. But if you've got a healthy plant, if you've got a healthy plant with really strong um, cell walls, if you've got a, a healthy plant because you've been feeding it a well-balanced nutrition where the plant can dictate what it wants to eat and when it wants to eat it, um, you, you know full well that when you grow a plant, and, and I'm going to pick on hydroponics only because most hydroponics plants I see, they haven't been given all of the other stuff in terms of they haven't been given the microbes, they haven't been able to get a lot of the trace minerals at times. Um, and you grow a plant in living soil, they look very different. And, and you can see it in the color of the leaf, you can see it in the thickness of the leaf. Um, if, you've, if you're optimizing your photosynthesis, you're able to produce a, almost a waxy layer uh, on, the, on that leaf surface. All of these things make it really hard for powdery mildew spores to both penetrate into the leaf surface and or survive when they're on the leaf surface. Let alone a healthy plant, if, if infected by powdery mildew, if it can maintain its health for the, for the duration of the life cycle of the plant, that powdery mildew will choose not to sporulate, right? Because it's a healthy plant. Um, powdery mildew, plants are, all, plants are often affected by powdery mildew, but you don't see the spores because the plant isn't in stress. If the plant gets overly stressed, the powdery mildew gets stressed and then decides to, hey, my host is gonna die. I better, I better you know, produce a whole bunch of offspring and, and, and live. So the key to addressing powdery mildew for the first part is making sure you've got an incredibly healthy, healthy plant with mineral nutrition and the right environmental conditions. Now, secondly, uh, I mean, we have most of our clients who are using living soil do not spray. They don't use foliar, um, they actually don't use foliar feeds. They don't use uh, any, any biopesticides. 
but there are some biopesticides that definitely work. And if you're looking at microbial biopesticides, for the most part, the ones that we would recommend, uh, actinovate is one that um, I believe is uh, streptomyces. Um, Mark, you're going to check, you're going to validate these, right? Uh, but I think actinovate is one that we use. I think it's a streptomyces. Um, then um, then uh, I cyclone. Uh, cyclone is a uh, a fermented uh, lactic acid, and um, regalia, which is a, I believe it's a fermented uh, Japanese knotweed. Those would be the main bio, and, and, and sorry, and there's like variations of that, uh, like uh, instead of, instead of um, um, cyclone, I think lactosan is another one. Um, I hate, I hate dropping names because I'm sure I'm going to leave some off. Um, but those are, those are some of the biopesticides that are typically used um, it's to address powdery mildew. You can, uh, uh, of course, you know, our, oftentimes our first step is, you know, nutrition, of course, but if we're going to use something, some people like sulfur. I'm not a big fan of using vaporized sulfur, um, but others will use um, oils. Uh, so you can use a mineral oil or a, a canola oil or something like that. Uh, you can use that as a, as a bit of a suffocant. Never use sulfur and oil. That's a disaster. Um, and then um, um, I, I guess um, hydrogen peroxide. We have a product called Zeratol, or you probably use Zeratol or have Zeratol. Zeratol is a, is a product that can be used just to help treat a little bit of early on. Um, in fact, a lot of people use it just even at the time of harvest. Um, although it's not uh, permitted as a... Uh, pesticide. I, I know that people use hypochlorous acid. Uh, it seems to have a lot of benefit in terms of really kind of um, cleaning up that plant and, and controlling a small amounts of powdery mildew. And then last, lastly, uh, a lot of a lot of folks will use potassium bicarbonate uh, mill stop as a as a powdery mildew. It's so important to recognize that. Um, the, the soil is, is so incredibly dynamic that within seconds, you can have species that are turning off and species that are turning on. And, when, and once again, thanks to all the work that Elaine Ingham did to highlight this, we now know that there's, there's thousands and thousands of different species. 